Welcome to the first lesson about desktop automation in LeapTest. Desktop automation covers all applications running on a Windows platform, like Word and Outlook, and it also covers applications built on Microsoft and Java and many other technologies. It could be your CRM or order handling system, or any other front office or back office application. In this video, we will introduce the basics of LeapTest and show you some examples of how to automate a desktop application. The first automation case looks like this. When I run the case, the LeapTest demo application is opening and we perform a login and end by verifying that the login was correct. LeapTest ships with a demo application that we will use throughout the training lessons. The demo application contains the most normal elements that you will find in a desktop application, including list of data, search functionality, and a form with different kinds of fields. You can use this to practice your LibTest skills or try out different automations. In the videos, we are starting the application from an icon in the taskbar. So let me show you how you can add this easily. I start by unpinning the icon from my own taskbar. To add it to the taskbar, simply navigate to the LeapTest installation folder. Typically on the C drive in the program files folder. Inside the LeapTest folder, you can find the studio folder. And inside here, you simply just right click the leaptest.demodesktop.exe and select Pin to Taskbar. This will add the dark blue LeapTest icon to your taskbar for easy access to the demo application. With the demo application added to the taskbar, let's start with the beginning. We click Projects in the main menu on the left, which gives us a list of all existing projects. In this case, I have only one project, and I will start by creating a new project. In the project pop-up, we specify a name for the project, Desktop Lessons. We'll just keep the rest of the values and click Save. A project is the highest level of category when you organize your test cases. Under the new project, I select to create a new test case by clicking New Case. I specify a title. and select Desktop UI as the case type. This ensures that we have the right perspective in the case and that we have access to the desktop automation features. Test cases in leap tests are flows made up of building blocks and we design and maintain the flows on the design canvas. When we create a new test case, we only have one building block to start with, the start building block. We can move the building block around and we can zoom and center using the buttons in the lower right corner of the canvas. We can also pan the canvas using the mouse either by pressing down the spacebar or by clicking the pan icon in the lower right corner. When we build a flow, we start by pulling the connector on the start building block. This connector is flexible and we can add the next building block wherever we want. When we release the connector, the building block menu pops up and shows all the categories of building blocks. We can either open a category and select a building block, or just start typing if we know the name of the building block. In this case, we will start with a start application building block, which is used for opening a desktop application. Once it's added, we see a green arrow from the start block to the start application block, which indicate the direction of the flow when the case executes. You can say the green arrow drives the execution of the flow. In the start application building block, we can either specify the name of the application, the path to the application, 
but the easiest way is to capture the application that we want to open. With the lead test demo application opened, I click capture. We can now use the mouse to select the application that we want to start. And once we select the demo application, all the details about this application is captured back into the start application building block. So it's now ready to execute. We select close all windows in the start block to ensure that we have the same starting point for every run of the case and click the play icon. This will run the case in preview mode. As we could see, the already open application was closed and a new instance was opened. When the demo application opens, we get a login box and we need to insert a username and a password. To do this, we add a set UI element value block after the start application block. This block will find and set the value of a selected element, in this case the username field, when the case is running. To select the element, I click Capture New Element. LeapTest now minimizes and the entire desktop is now in capture mode. This means we can use the mouse to select the element we want to set a value in. In this case, I select the username field in the login box which captures the field back into LeapTest. We have a text value field where we can input the text we want to insert, in this case, the username test. We do the same with the password. The only difference here is that we can select the option password, so the password is not in clear text inside the case. I enter password123 with a capital P. The final piece in the login is to click on the login button. I add a click UI element and capture the login button. Instead of rerunning the entire case to verify the logic, we can just right click one of the building blocks and select run case from here. In this case, the test case will attach itself to the already open application and just execute from the selected building block. This makes it easy to do a stepwise progressive design of the test case while constantly making sure that the functionality works as intended. When the test case runs, we record a video of what was going on, so we now have a visual representation of everything that happened. If we scrub the video, we can see that the building blocks lights up when they are active and that the activity log on the right is also following the video. These tools in combination makes it very easy to debug a test case. Also be aware that the default state of the test case is failed unless we explicitly set the status to pass, which we will do in a minute. The last part of the login process is to verify that the login went well. And we will do this by looking for an element on the screen that will only appear if the login went well. In this case, the name of the logged in user in the lower left corner of the application. I add a find UI element capture the user name. If this element is found, the test case should pass, so I add a pass building block. Let's run the entire case from the start. As we can see, the case now passed, meaning we had a successful login and that we found the username in the lower left corner of the application. 
In this first lesson, we introduced how you can create and design cases for desktop automation in LeapTest. We saw how to run and debug cases and how to open and capture desktop elements from applications.